Hey everybody, as you're probably already aware by this point, Epic has, as of last week, released Unreal Engine 4.22, which is the newest version of Unreal Engine 4, and with it they've included uh, a bunch of new things and crash fixes and things like that for Niagara. Um, so here are the release notes that I have up on screen, and if we scroll down past all these lovely things that they've added, eventually we get down to the Niagara stuff. So um, you can see there's quite a bit of Niagara stuff in here. Um, and I figured what better way to force myself to familiarize um, myself with the changes than to make a video about it and share that with you guys and also just <laughs> kind of get myself back into the swing of making videos again. So I felt like I would go through some of these uh, changes. Uh, there's a pretty decent list and I'm going to talk about all the, the bigger ones here. Uh, there's also this mind-bogglingly long list of changes and crash and bug fixes. Not going to go through a ton of that. There is a very long section uh, dedicated to Niagara actually. Uh, and there are also some things that I do want to talk about that are buried in there. Um, so I'm not going to go step through this list. Uh, instead I'm just going to open up uh, Unreal and just kind of ad lib from a short list of things that I found pretty interesting. Uh, so I'm going to try and keep this kind of short. Uh, hopefully I don't ramble too much, but uh, we'll just see how long this winds up taking. <laughs> so uh, the very first thing that I wanted to talk about here, uh, because I was most excited about this, was they have revamped Collision in Niagara. Um, and so uh, to show this off, I had uh, a project that I was working on before uh, that I dropped because uh, I wasn't really satisfied with the collision results I was getting. Uh, so I was excited to bring this into 4.22 and see what uh, the new collision can do. So just really quickly, basically just brought this in uh, and added this new collision module in here. Um, you can see it's got a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of boxes to change things in here. Um, and a lot of these things aren't really described, so I'm not totally sure uh, what all these levers do. Um, and there may be some features in here that I'm hoping for that I just don't understand. So uh, forgive me if I have just totally uh, missed something important in here. But basically I have the system that's a bunch of marbles that, are, are, that have collisions enabled so they can bounce around. Uh, so uh, there are some things to talk about here. So the first thing you'll notice is that I, I have it set up so when they hit, they kind of bounce in a random direction. Um, and that is this randomized collision normal. Uh, as far as I know, this was not a feature before in 4.21. Uh, and it's kind of neat. It, it provides a little bit of variety to the collisions to make it feel a little bit more real so that these marbles aren't like perfectly uniform. Um, so they just bounce a little bit. Uh, a couple things you will notice, uh, it does not appear as if there's collision between particles, which is something I was hoping for, and it's one of the reasons why I stopped, you can see right there, uh, why I stopped using uh, or trying to do this project. Um, I assume that there's some technical limitation behind that, like if you have a sufficiently large particle system and having collisions between all of them would just be too technically demanding. Um, it would be nice to have a feature that you could turn on for smaller particle systems with you know fewer particles. Another thing you might notice is that uh, for some reason things like to sink into the ground here. I'm not really sure why that is. Uh, there are some settings that I have tweaked that have kind of alleviated that to some extent, but it always seems to be there. Um, but as you can see, um, it's a pretty basic collision, but it, it seems fairly stable other than things sinking into the ground. Uh, one thing you might really notice is that they don't rotate, um, and I don't know if there is a setting for that. Previously in 421, you could add angular impulse, which would let things rotate off of collisions and make them seem a little bit more realistic. Uh, that is not the case here. So if I bring up my 421 copy of this, you can see when things hit the ground, they rotate a little bit, or when things collide, they rotate a little bit, which I think adds a little bit of realism and just believability to the effect whereas if you look at 422 they just kind of statically bounce which is a little strange uh so you know some things i feel like could be done a little bit better here um but again like if you look at 421 there are a lot of 
uh, issues with the collision system that needed to be fixed. Uh, you can see things just kind of like pop around. Um, sometimes they'll just pop directly into the floor. You see things just hanging there. So obviously it wasn't perfect before and they are improving. Hopefully we'll see more inclusions to this feature to make it a little bit more robust in the future though. So uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about with the collision. It's, you know, it's an improvement, but it still needs a little bit of work. So let's step on to some of the other things. I'm just going to open up an empty project here and open up uh, a fountain emitter just to kind of show you some of the other things that they've added to uh, 422 or to Niagara and 422 that are pretty neat. So first of all, um, we'll go over vector fields. Uh, you can sample vector fields now and, uh, and then apply them as forces to your particle system. So if you don't know what vector fields are, it's essentially just like a field of vectors that then can influence uh, the velocities or forces in your particles. So, so first of all, you add a sample vector field uh, module, and then you can just click Fix Module because it wants you to add and apply as well. And you'll notice right off the bat, nothing's happening. We don't have a, a vector field applied for one. So now we have a vector field applied. I think what's happening and why these things are just falling is that there's no velocity being applied, so it's setting the velocity to zero. So now if I add the velocity, you can kind of see um, it starts to do things. You could also apply it as a force, so that also works. I think if you just set this to zero and apply it as a force, it will also just eventually, if you get a high enough force, it'll start um, applying all that. And so then you can also apply you know, any number of these different vector fields. Um, to get different effects. You can supply your own vector fields. I've never actually made a vector field, but I've seen tutorials on making them in Maya. Uh, I've also seen that there is a, it's a plugin for Unreal Engine 4 that you can make your own vector fields in VR if you have VR. So a bunch of different ways to make vector fields, and I can really give you a lot of different options for you know doing cool things with your, with your particle system. So you get out a vector field that that influences little embers like in a fire particle system twirling in the air and give them a really nice artistic touch as opposed to just being sort of random. So that's pretty cool. Um, well, let's close those out. Uh, they also added uh, a new curl noise feature. So before you could add curl noise, here you can actually um, uh, put in some inputs to the, the uh, curl noise field that's being procedurally generated and then use that to drive your curl noise force that you're adding. I have played with this a little bit. I couldn't quite see much of a difference in the, the curl noise that was being generated. I'm sure if you spent a lot of time with this, you would, you'd really be able to appreciate the differences, but it's just a little bit more um, control that you can have over the forces that you're adding to your particle systems. Now, Moving on from these little uh, modules around forces and things like that, uh, there's a really pretty substantial change that they added, which is deterministic random number generation. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar with what determinism is in random number generation, essentially non-deterministic means you're just getting random numbers that are maybe not truly random, but are different each time. Uh, with determinism, essentially you're seeding the random number generator so that you're getting a predictable sequence of random numbers so that every time your simulation is going to play out the same way. So the way this works is in emitter properties, there's this little checkbox that can globally make your particle system determinate. Um, so if you check it, then you can pick what seed you want. Um, so you can get different random seeds. And then every single time your particle system will play out the same way. It'll still generate random numbers, but they'll be the same succession of random numbers. So that's pretty cool. But what's even cooler about this is that you don't just have to set it globally. You can actually go in and anywhere that you have a uniform range, you can go in and you can determine the individual randomness mode for that range. So for instance, if you want the lifetime to always be different, but you wanted the mass to have the same succession for some reason to be uh, determinate or deterministic, sorry, uh, then you could go in here and click randomness mode and change 
from simulation defaults to deterministic or non-deterministic. Non so that's pretty cool. Um, the other thing is you can use this in modules. So if I open up uh, any module here, we can go to uh, random, if I can type, I cannot type as per usual, random, there we go. So you can get random, whoa, I'm really far out. <laughs> uh, so not that random node, we actually want the seeded random. So there's just a normal random that is non-deterministic. You can also get seeded random. Um, so that's just a, a couple different nodes that you can use in your modules if you're creating your own modules. Uh, and while we are in here, we can also look at some of the other things I added. So actually we can just look right here. Things like multiply, addition, division, and stuff like that. They've added uh, additional pins, so you can just kind of add in more pins so that you can uh, stack operations, which is pretty neat. Um, and they've also added a, a pretty cool little feature um, in here where you can select the simula select by simulation target, which is essentially if you want to select a different value for a variable or an input based on whether or not you're doing a CPU sim or a GPU sim, uh, which is pretty potentially useful if you're making modules for other people to use, but you don't want them to have to think about those things. You just want to say like, here's a module that you can use regardless of whether it's a GPU sim or a CPU sim, and then you can set the variables behind the scenes so that uh, they don't have to worry about um, compatibility with CPU or GPU. And for the most part, Niagara is pretty smart about working the same on both CPU and GPU, but it doesn't have parity everywhere. And you also might not want to do certain things on the CPU that you do on the GPU, or at least not with like to the same extent, the same number of particles, things like that. So that's, that's a pretty neat little thing that we can now do. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything within I wanted to talk about within the node editor um, or within the module editor. Um, but there are still a couple other things that are pretty interesting or potentially useful. So if we go back to our Niagara emitter, uh, one really neat one that you probably already noticed is that there is now an initialized particle module. Uh, so you can just add this. Um, if you go into initialization, there's particle and ribbon. So depending on what kind of particle system you're doing, you can choose which model is appropriate, uh, which module is appropriate for you. Uh, and it's just a collection of um, attributes or variables that you might find useful. So things like lifetime, position, mass, um, also things like uh, size and rotation. And you can just sort of check which one you want to use and then enter a value for them. Uh, and let's see, what else do we have? Uh, if you look down at uh, update particle age. Now you can drop this down and you can actually tell it not to kill the particle when its full lifetime has elapsed. So basically uh, they'll just never die, they'll just live on forever. You can see particles counting up until the particle system um, resets, whereas before, if this thing will reset, you can see there's only, you know, 200 particles max about. <laughs> if I uncheck this, it'll get up to like 900 or even more just you know over the the lifetime of the particle system none of these things are being killed so if if you have a particle system where you want the particles to hang around until something else gets rid of them uh, this is perfect for you um, you have options about loop, looping particle lifetime and stuff like that you will have to consider how this affects things like you know normalized particle lifetime which drives a bunch of curves and things like that but it's, uh, it's another tool that you can use, which is pretty cool. Um, and then finally, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was this module that they've added called WindForce, which I'm sure is something a lot of people were interested in having. Um, so this is basically a force that you can add to your particle system that approximates what, what wind would be doing to the particle system now. Keep in mind, this is not actually hooked into like a wind actor in the game. You're actually just importing or inputting numbers into this. So let's just put a random number in here. And you can see now we've got wind. And you can change the, the uh, air resistance. If you put it up to one, they won't be affected by it. If you put it down super low, 
and they'll be really affected by it. So that's just uh, another neat thing that you can do. Um, super useful. Uh, you can just kind of play with this and get the numbers that you like. And then you have wind affecting your particle system. And you could potentially drive um, this wind speed by uh, a user variable that you could change in blueprint so that you can make this particle system fit in your particular scene to get the, the wind speed that you want, wind speed and direction that you want. So that is a super useful node. I've definitely seen people asking for, you know, wind application to particle systems. So that is something that we can do now, which is awesome. Uh, and that's pretty much all that I had picked out that I thought was was super useful to me um, in the new update. Uh, they have other things. I, I highly recommend you kind of scroll through and take a look at what they've added and what they've fixed, just in case you were having issues before. And get around to, to playing with the new update, because that's always fun. Um, I hope you uh, hope you found this somewhat useful. It was at least educational for me, which is maybe the the most important point for me. <laughs> but uh, I hope you guys got something out of this. And you know, if you have any questions about it, just let me know in the comments. Um, let me know what what's the thing that you think is most exciting about this update and what you think you can do with it. Uh, so I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.